Hey everyone, and welcome back. I'm Anton, and in this video, we're going to be taking a look at my top 10 Game Boy games. The Game Boy is one of my favorite Nintendo consoles, with its many variations, cool accessories, and fantastic game library. This list was extremely challenging to create, as there are so many great games, which is why I've added an honorable mention section for games that were very close but didn't quite end up making it on the list. Just to be clear, this list will only consist of original Game Boy games, or games that have just Game Boy on the box art. So this will include Game Boy Color games and Black Cartridge games, as I'll have a separate video for those ones. Anyways, before we begin, don't forget to hit the subscribe button to see future videos and more top 10 lists just like this one, and let's get started. After the end of Super Mario Land 2, Wario was kicked out of Mario's castle. Well, Wario Land Super Mario Land 3 is Wario's first playable adventure that tells a story about what happened after the events of Super Mario Land 2. In this game, you control Wario, Mario's polar opposite, if you will. This game plays very differently to Super Mario Land 2, with new power-ups and overall a different speed, as Wario moves much slower than Mario does. After failing to take over Mario's castle, Wario is now trying to build a new mansion for himself. To do this, he must collect quite the large sum of coins to eventually build his dream home. This game has you going through multiple interesting levels that are very well designed. There are tons of interesting enemies and puzzles to solve. The hats are pretty cool too, and give you the ability to breathe fire sort of, and even ram harder into enemies. The bosses are really neat too, and some even based off of other Mario enemies. I'm glad that they took a different take with the next Super Mario Land game, as Super Mario Land 2 pretty much perfected the Mario formula, especially for a handheld. So depending on how many coins you collect by the end of the game, you will get a better ending. I recommend checking out this game, and the Game Boy original is pretty much the only and best way to play the game. And that's why Wario Land Super Mario Land 3 gets the 10th spot on the list. Next on our list is Kirby's Dream Land 2. This game is the third mainline entry in the series, being released right after Kirby's Adventure. This game not only brings the copy ability over from that game, but it also adds a world structure from that game too. So you can tell this game really takes most of its inspiration from Kirby's Adventure. This game is a lot larger in scope than its previous Game Boy structure, with larger levels and more creativity and you have the ability to save which is also really appreciated, as a majority of early Game Boy games didn't really have much of saving. There are new mechanics, enemies, collectibles, and bosses. But the newest biggest addition to this game is the addition of Rick, Kine, and Koo, which are animal friends that give Kirby new abilities, especially when used with the copy ability as well, as you can combine them to create different playstyles, which is really neat. The music and graphics are excellent in this game, and a large improvement from the previous title. You can also play this game on the Super Game Boy, which adds full color and enhancements as well. So that's why I recommend you play the game. But this game is really awesome, and if you like the Kirby series, I recommend checking it out. And that's why it gets the ninth spot on the list. Mega Man has quite the history with the Game Boy. Many titles are released, getting better and better. However, it's the fifth title that really is fantastic. Mega Man 5 is a completely original Mega Man game for the Game Boy, whereas Mega Man 1 through 4 are actually remixed and based off of the NES Mega Man titles instead. Mega Man 5 has you defeating bosses named after planets in the solar system, which is really interesting, such as Mars, Venus, and Mercury. The levels in this game are the best that the Game Boy has seen, with excellent graphics, music, and polished gameplay. You can tell the engine has been perfected and polished with this final Game Boy entry, as it feels extremely smooth to play. The bosses are really cool, and the art style, especially with the enemies and overall design with the 8-bit style, has been perfected, and this was probably the last game to really utilize this style specifically, so it is really nice. This specific Game Boy game has become quite hard to find, and expensive in recent years, as it wasn't printed as much. However, to force yourself from spending upwards from $200, the game is available on the Nintendo 3DS's Virtual Console, making it more accessible at a significantly lower price tag. 
So if you love Mega Man games and want a completely original Mega Man title to pick up and play, I really recommend checking this game out. And of course, you can also check out the other Mega Man Game Boy games too, as they are also very good, but to me, this one just takes the 8th spot on the list. Kid Dracula is a game that you may not have heard of, but it's one that you seriously need to play. Kid Dracula is a port of its NES counterpart that was only released in Japan. Using the NES's hardware, it's one extremely impressive game, but this version added more accessibility features, removed or altered tedious elements, and even added some new content, so it's considered the best version of the game. Kid Dracula is technically part of the Castlevania series, and even though it's not confirmed, we may believe this character to be none other than Alucard. Kid Dracula is a 2D platformer that has you taking control of our main protagonist, Kid Dracula. You have the ability to jump and shoot, pretty basic stuff. From the get-go, you also have the ability to turn into a bat, to get to higher platforms that are further and you can't really get to, and even discover secret items. As the game progresses, you obtain other abilities such as walking on the ceiling and even using an umbrella. These help to make the game more interesting and are handled in a convenient way. The level design in this game is fantastic. Not only are they very well designed, but the different themes are all very original, bursting with charm. The game doesn't have a proper saving system, only a password one, but this may be good if you want to skip sections of the game as you can find these codes online. The music and graphics are amazing for a Game Boy title, and show off the capabilities of the system very well, especially considering that this game came out in 1993, which is a bit earlier in the Game Boy's life cycle. Overall, there is a lot to like here. However, this game is quite the tough one to get a hold of, and the prices have been steadily climbing for this title. You can play the NES version of this game in the Castlevania Anniversary Collection, however for the Game Boy 1 you might need to fork over a bit of cash, which is why I recommend you play it on some other way, but overall, it is a game I recommend playing, and that's why it gets the 7th spot on the list. Next up on the list is Wario Land 2, the sequel to Wario Land Super Mario Land 3. This game is very different to its predecessor. Similar to Super Mario Land 2, this game really polishes and changes the gameplay to make the game feel fresh and more intuitive. Firstly, Wario has a brand new design that looks more in line with his modern appearance. Secondly, this game seems to be less of a Mario clone and more of its own thing. For example, question mark blocks have been removed, Traditional power-ups are gone, and Wario no longer shrinks. And finally, lives have been completely removed, and instead your punishment comes in the form of being sent back to a previous area. Wario is able to dash and pick up various enemies. You are able to interact with many puzzles and destroy walls and many other objects. This makes the game feel very different from the previous entry, and matches Wario's personality and vibe. The story is that Wario's treasure that he obtained in the previous game is stolen. Now Wario must go and find the treasure and take care of the thieves. This game takes a chapter-based structure, which has Wario accomplishing various tasks. For example, at the beginning, Wario's mansion is flooding and you need to stop the water from continuously running. There are so many well-designed levels here, and the length of the game is quite long too, so there's a lot to keep you busy. The bosses are very unique, and there are a bunch of new enemies as well that are really cool too. And I really like the way that the power-ups are essentially effects that the enemies give you, which can be good or bad depending on the situation. The graphics and music are excellent, especially coming from a late release on the console. They are definitely a step up from the previous game and are much more fluid. And Wario lost a lot more weight in this game too. But overall, Wario Land 2 is an excellent game, and if you want the best experience, I recommend playing the Game Boy Color version, as it is the same game with some enhancements, and was actually released as a launch title for the Game Boy Color. After this game, many titles followed, but to me, this is probably one of the best Wario Land titles, and is extremely underrated. So that's why Wario Land 2 gets the 6th spot on the list. Super Mario Land 2 Six Golden Coins is one of the most original 2D Mario games ever made. This game is a huge step up from its predecessor. Not only does it look better, but it plays much better also. You have the ability to do a spin jump, which is really cool too, 
and you can tell the game does take inspiration from Super Mario World. Everything about this game is charming and unique. The areas and levels are all very cleverly themed, and each one is memorable. For example, you have the Macro Zone, which has Mario shrunk down to an ant size, and the Space Zone, which changes your gravity and has some really interesting levels. Or the Mario Zone, which has gears and all sorts of crazy and weird stuff. I also love the original enemies in this game, and it's very disappointing that we haven't seen them since. It's really only Wario that has returned from this game, and yes, this is Wario's first appearance. He serves as the main villain in the final boss of the game, and speaking of bosses, they are probably the best in terms of 2D Mario games. They are very original and cleverly designed. My favorites have to be the three pigs, the bird, and the squid. And even Tatanga makes an appearance as well. The presentation is outstanding for a Game Boy title, and the game is not too long to play, but I have to say I really like that the length is not too long, and it's perfect for a pick up and play experience. I especially like that it has a map that you are able to go wherever you want as well, similar to Super Mario World. But this game is not linear, meaning that you can go to any level and defeat any boss in any order and it's defeating bosses that you are awarded with golden coins, which, as the title says, you need six of them in order to unlock the door to Mario's castle, which has now been taken over by Wario. But I really recommend playing this game, especially if you love 2D Mario. And if you want, you can check out the DX version, which is a ROM hack that makes the game even better, and it fixes some graphical errors, it removes any weird lag or glitches, and even adds Luigi as a playable character. So I recommend checking out that version if you're interested in really playing this game. So overall, Super Mario Land 2, 6 Golden Coins gets the 5th spot on the list. Next up, in the 4th spot, is Donkey Kong. Now you may be thinking, isn't this just a port of the NES game and arcade game? Well, once you get past the first few levels, the game completely opens up and it becomes apparent that this game is a lot larger. Now you have way more levels that take the mechanics of Donkey Kong to the next level. Mario has a brand new moveset and more ability to take advantage of, and the physics are a lot better. Now the levels in this game are a bit different from the traditional Donkey Kong levels, as your goal instead of trying to make it to the top, is to get the key to the door, and once you open the door, you will then move on to the next stage. In this game, you will need to overcome new enemies, puzzles, and platforming challenges, and much more. And I really like how now you can pick up enemies and objects like Super Mario Bros. 2, as it really fits well with the gameplay. There are boss stages, new mechanics introduced throughout the game, and even levels based on Donkey Kong Jr. And the boss stages are pretty much like ones you'd find in the original classic Donkey Kong, where you're trying to get to Donkey Kong himself and trying to defeat him, but he just picks up Pauline and he's off to the next world. The graphics look nice, and if played on a Super Game Boy, the colors end up looking excellent. And there are actually a few more additions such as improved sound effects. For example, Pauline now actually screams, so that's actually really cool that they've added some things there. And if you didn't know, there's actually a sequel to this game called Mario vs Donkey Kong, which in itself is a series. However, I would say that the Game Boy one is truly the better game as it tries to be as faithful to the original Donkey Kong while providing its own new experience, and one that is a lot more modern as well. This is one of the best Game Boy titles there are, and one that I really recommend playing. If you're not the biggest fan of Donkey Kong, I'd recommend checking this one out as it's a lot better and has better physics and better controls than the original Donkey Kong, so definitely check this game out, and that's why it gets the fourth spot on the list. When you think of the Nintendo Game Boy, what game immediately comes to mind? You guessed it, Quarth. Close. Well, it's none other than Tetris. Tetris was released as one of five launch titles in the West for the Nintendo Game Boy. This game was included with the system, which meant that you didn't even need to buy a game at launch, and for some people, they just bought the console solely to play this game. It was leaning into the casual market and was easy to pick up and play, which is the perfect launch title similar to Wii Sports. Now, I don't think I need to explain Tetris, but I guess I'll do it anyway. So in Tetris, various tetrominoes fall from the top of the screen, 
and you need to create solid lines. Once you have created a line, then the blocks will be eliminated. If you are unable to eliminate blocks, and they reach the top of the screen, then it will be game over. The game plays, well, great, and it's pretty simple as it's a very early Game Boy release, and it has multiple levels with varying difficulty. The music is very iconic, and the game also has multiplayer, that is if you have access to another Game Boy with the game. Overall, a fantastic puzzle game, and one that's very easy to find nowadays, as Tetris is pretty much one of the cheapest games on the system. And also, Tetris has other spin-offs and titles in the series such as Tetris 99, which has a bit of a different take on the game, and even other versions like the NES one, which is pretty similar to the Game Boy one. And that's why Tetris gets the third spot on the list. Pokemon has cemented itself as one of the biggest media franchises in the world, with mobile games, console games, tons of merchandise, anime, and even movies. But all of it traces back to these. Pokemon Red, Blue, and later released Pokemon Yellow. These games, which were released right at the end of the original Game Boy's life cycle, were critical successes and became hugely popular. They used the Game Boy's Link Cable feature to its advantage by allowing players to trade Pokemon among their friends. Pokemon Red, Blue, and Yellow starts with you, a young boy going off to become a Pokemon trainer with the hopes of catching, battling, and climbing your way up to the Elite Four to become the Pokemon Master. Along with your starter Pokemon, you explore the Kanto region, finding items, talking to citizens, and purchasing stuff too. Even if the games do not push the limits of the system, especially for a late release, the scope of the game is quite large, and the main story length is approximately 30 hours, so there's a lot of stuff to do here. Music is also pretty good, although compared to other Game Boy titles, it may be a bit on the weak side. But overall, Pokemon's first generation on the Game Boy is excellent, and for a brand new IP, it introduced a lot of ideas to the RPG genre as a whole, and created the foundation for the franchise too, which some will argue needs a bit of shaking up in recent times. But if you want to experience the counter region on better hardware, you can play the remix on the Game Boy Advance, Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green, or if you want a more casual experience, you can check out Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee on the Nintendo Switch. But overall, that's why Pokemon Red, Blue, and Yellow get the second spot on the list. Now before we get to the final game, let's go over a few honorable mentions that I would strongly recommend checking out also. These are in no particular order. The first Castlevania on Game Boy isn't anything to really write home about. It's not polished and overall not the greatest. But its sequel, Castlevania 2, Belmont's Revenge takes everything not so great about its predecessor and fixes everything to create one excellent game. This game is smoother, feels better to control, and the level design is way better. You were able to pick any castle and play them in any order similar to Super Mario Land 2. And the graphics in this game are a lot better than the last game and look quite nice for a Game Boy game. So if you want to play a Castlevania game on the Game Boy, this is one I recommend you check out. And you can also find the Game Boy Color Enhanced version of this game within Konami's GB Collection 4, as it looks really nice and makes for a better playing experience. Super Mario Land is the first handheld Mario game, not counting the Game & Watch ones. This one takes a similar approach to the first Super Mario Bros. on the NES. The story goes that Mario has to save Princess Daisy from Tatanga, a completely original villain. You have four different worlds, with few levels in each to explore, and each world is a different kingdom with a different theme, most of them based off of different real-world locations such as Egypt and China, and overall the locations have a very unique and unusual feel, which I really like. The enemies in this game are a bit different from the Mushroom Kingdom ones, for example, Koopas are now Bombshell Koopas. And a lot of the enemies are very unique, and it's really disappointing that we haven't seen them since. The airplane sections are really cool, as they basically turn the game into a shooter like R-Type. The physics in this game are perhaps not the greatest, but once you get used to them, they are very playable. The soundtrack is one of the best on the handheld, especially for an early release, but the graphics are pretty meh. But the game is much shorter than Super Mario Land 2, but makes for a great pickup and play experience. 
But if you want even more ways to play this game, you can check out the DX ROM hack, which adds full color and looks really nice. And you can even play New Super Mario Land, which is a completely original and unofficial game made for the Super Nintendo. And it captures that original feel so well. The Donkey Kong Land series is the handheld equivalent to the Donkey Kong Country series. The games are truly impressive, utilizing pre-rendered technology. However, the third game is really where the series shines, because this game plays so much better than the others. A big problem with the previous games is that there is too much happening on screen, which makes the game very difficult to play since it uses very few colors. And especially with ghosting and other problems with earlier Game Boy screens, it can be a nightmare to play. However, Donkey Kong Land 3 doesn't have much happening in the background to make platforms clear to see. And the level design is the best in the series. And the camera is very fluid. The bosses are also pretty cool too. I especially like the different animals you can take control of, such as the sturgeon and parrot. What's not to like about this game? You get to play as Kitty Kong. Overall, a really fun game, and if you want to have a better experience, the Super Game Boy gives it full color, and the Game Boy Color makes it look better too. Now, we've already talked about its sequel, but Kirby's Dream Land is a really great game. Even though this game may not have the copy ability and is quite simple, it's still a fun pick up and play experience, similar to Super Mario Land. The levels in this game are very well designed, with mini bosses and full bosses. As the first Kirby game, it is very good. However, it does lack the scope that other games in the series, such as Kirby's Adventure and Kirby's Dream Land 2 have. But overall, Kirby's Dream Land is a great game. And if you want to see where the Pink Puff Bowl got his start, I sincerely recommend checking out this Game Boy Classic. And finally, of the honorable mention section, we have Metroid 2 Return of Samus. This is the sequel to the NES game Metroid and continues its story. Your goal is to destroy all of the Metroid, and to do so you must explore SR388. As you progress throughout the adventure, you will unlock different abilities that allow Samus to reach new areas and obtain special items. This game can be a bit confusing to navigate, simply due to the absence of a map, but if you do take your time or look at a fan-made map online, you will be able to enjoy the game. The soundtrack is pretty good overall, and the graphics are definitely an improvement from its predecessor on the NES. This is definitely one of the larger adventures on the Game Boy. However, if you really want to play this game in a more modern and accessible way, I recommend playing the 3DS remake Metroid Samus Returns, as it completely reimagines the game while staying true to the Game Boy Classic. But if you want that original Game Boy experience, you can always play the DX ROM hack, or even play it on Game Boy Color, as it looks much better. And that concludes the honorable mentions. In the number one spot, we have The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. This game pushes the Game Boy to its absolute limits, not only with graphics, music, and gameplay, but the scope and length of this game is far beyond what you would imagine for a Game Boy game. For starters, the game's main story is around 13 hours, with tons of collectibles and extras. This game takes place on Koholint Island, a mysterious location that Link finds himself washed ashore on. Your goal is to then collect the various instruments to wake the windfish, which will allow you to escape the island. To do this, you'll need to explore the island and explore dungeons which are essentially large puzzles, with bosses, enemies, and special items. And you can't forget about the helpful abilities that you will learn throughout the adventure, which will allow you to progress and solve puzzles around the island. Every time you get a new ability, you're able to do a bunch of new things, and it always feels like you're finding more about this island, and it's really cool. As you do get attached to this wonderful location, and it's always cool to see new secrets and stuff. This game has loads of charm, with an excellent soundtrack, wonderful graphics, and a fantastic story. I would even go as far to say that this is one of the best Zelda games, period. And the DX version on the Game Boy Color includes some extra features such as the color dungeon and better visuals. But if you want the best way to experience this game, I'd recommend playing the remake on the Switch, which is pretty much how I've enjoyed this game a lot, as I have played it on the Game Boy Color, but this was just the version that I want to fully experience. But the Switch version takes the game to a whole new level, and fixes a ton of annoying issues and limitations that the Game Boy has. So because of how well this game holds up in the modern era, and its impressive nature on the Game Boy, this game gets the first spot on the list. Anyways guys, 
that brings us to the end of the video. I hope you all did enjoy it, and if you want to check out these games, many of them are available on the Nintendo 3DS Virtual Console, which is probably the best way to experience these games. And you may find some of these games on other platforms as well. However, for games that are simply unavailable, I recommend using an emulator or buying an original copy, as that may be the best way to experience some of these games. There are a lot of games that I wish I could have put in this video, but if you do want to see more videos on Game Boy games, definitely let me know, as the Game Boy is one of my favorite consoles and there's a ton of games that I really would like to talk about. So don't forget to hit the subscribe button to see future videos heading your way, as we are approaching 10,000 subscribers, which is really awesome, and tell me what you think of the list, let me know. And I will see you all in the next one.